This is part 8 of Entity Framework Tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss using stored procedures to perform insert, update and delete operations using Entity Framework Code First approach. Let's look at the steps involved. First, create an empty ASP.NET web application project and install Entity Framework if it's not already installed. Let's add a class file to this project and let's call this employee.cs. This employee class is going to contain four properties ID, name, gender, and salary. To speed things up, I have already typed the required code. The next step is to add another class file and let's call this employee DB context.cs. This employee DB context class is going to inherit from DB context class, which is present in system.data.entity namespace. So let's go ahead and bring that in as well. and make the employee DB context class inherit from DB context class. This class is going to contain a public property which is going to return a DB set of employee objects and let's call this property employees and let's have the get and set accessors. And this class is also going to override the method that's present in the DB context class. To find out what are all the methods that are available for overriding, simply type the override keyword and then press the space bar. We are going to override this on model creating method. Now this is where we tell the entity framework to use stored procedures. And the way we do that is we use this parameter that's coming into this method, model builder dot entity of employee. So with this employee entity, anytime we insert, edit, uh, update or delete an employee, we want to use stored procedures. And we tell that using this method, map to stored procedures. So basically we are telling map this employee entity to use stored procedures. Okay. All right. And to this class, I mean project, we are going to add another class file and let's call this employee repository and this file is going to contain the um, methods to you know select employees insert update and delete employees okay so first of all within the at the class level let's create um, an object of type employee db context and then this is going to have uh, a public method and this is going to return list of employee objects and let's call this get employees and the employee DB context object has got the employees property which is going to return a DB set of employee objects let's convert that to list and return the list of employees pretty straightforward method now we're going to have a method to insert an employee so this is not going to return anything let's call this insert employee and obviously we need to provide it with the employee object that we want to insert and we are going to use the employee DB context object which has got employees property which, and to that employees collection add an, um, the employee object that is coming into this method as a parameter and then invoke employee db context objects save changes method which is actually going to save the changes to the database similarly we are going to have update employee method which again is not going to return anything let's call this update employee And here, what we are going to do is, first of all, you know, find the object that you want to update. So employees dot first or default. So we are using some link methods here. So x such that x dot id. So what we are doing here is, within the employees collection, retrieve the employee object that we want to update. And this is the this object which is coming into this update method is going to contain you know whatever changes we have made you know maybe using the UI. So what we are going to do is we are going to take the employee ID of that object, match it with the 
object that is present in the employees list and obviously this first or default method is going to return an employee object which we actually want to update so let us store it in a variable of type employee and let's call this employee to update so that's the employee object that we want to update and what you need to do here is obviously set all the properties so employee to update dot name equals employee dot name similarly set gender and salary properties as well employee to update dot gender equals employee dot gender and finally employee to update dot salary equals employee dot salary and then simply call employee db context dot save changes which is going to save the changes to the database similarly we are going to have a delete method so again to the delete method we are passing the employee object that we want to delete and then let's call this employee to delete so from the list of employees uh, retrieve the employee object that matches with the ID of the employee object that we want to delete and then what we're going to do is we have the employee DB context dot employees dot remove the employee that we want to delete and call employee DB context dot save changes so pretty straightforward methods there okay all right within the web.config file we need to add a connection string to our uh, database and to speed things up again I have typed this connection string so let me copy that and paste it within the connection strings section of the web.config file so notice that we have named it employee DB context which is similar to this name right here okay and we have the connection string I'm using local server database is sample and I'm going to use integrated security you can either specify SSPI or you can simply say integrated security is equal to true and you will have to provide the provider name system.data.sql client all right now let's actually flip to SQL Server Management Studio at the moment notice that I already have a sample database there so I'm actually going to delete that And now let's actually uh, before we run this project we need a web form so let's go ahead and add a web form and first let's set uh, the style attribute on the div tag let's set font family to Arial let's flip this to the design mode and we need three controls here first a grid view control and we need a details view control and an object data source control at this point let's build our solution so that all these classes are compiled okay I think we didn't change the name of the method here so this has to be delete employee all right so let's build the solution it should build now successfully so notice the status bar will succeeded now let's flip to our web form so first we need to configure our object data source control so click on configure data source and here our business object is going to be employee repository that is the class which contains the methods to select insert update and delete employees so let's click next on the select tab select get employees method on the update tab select update employee method on the insert tab select insert employee and on the delete tab select delete employee and click finish so we are done configuring the object data source control now let's configure the grid view control first of all let's auto format this to use colorful scheme and then let's set our object data source control source one as the data source control and we want to enable editing and we want to enable deleting as well 
And another important thing that we need to do is set the data key names property of the grid view control. So by default, I mean here, ID is going to be the key of the employee table. So we need to tell that to the grid view control. And the way we do that is by using this data key names property. So ID column is going to be the data key. OK? And yeah, that's it configuring the grid view control. Now let's configure the details view control. Let's auto format this also to use colorful scheme. And we want to use object data source one as the data source control. And here we want to enable inserting. And while we are here, let's also set the default mode of the details view control to insert. And we don't want this ID to be editable. So let's flip to, uh, this to the source mode and then set ID, insert visible attribute to false. So at this point, ID is not, you know, a user cannot provide a value for the ID because that's an identity column. It doesn't make sense to provide a value for it. Okay, so at this point, let's go ahead and build our solution. And let's run the project. And notice within SQL Server, um, we don't have the sample database. So when we run this, it should actually create uh, the sample database automatically for us. It should also create employees table within the sample database. Along with that, it's also going to create three stored procedures for us to insert an employee, delete an employee, and update an employee. Now, at the moment, the web form doesn't display any data. That's basically because we have a brand new database and employees table within that without any data. That's the reason why we don't see the grid view control. Um, so now if we flip back to SQL Server Management Studio, refresh the databases folder and notice that we have got sample database. And if we expand that, look at the tables. So there we got employees table. And if we expand that, expand columns, we got ID name, gender, salary. And if you expand this programmability folder and then expand stored procedures, notice that we have got three stored procedures there. And look at the naming convention used. Employee underscore delete. Employee is the name of our entity. Right? So to delete an employee, we have the stored procedure, employee underscore delete. To insert an employee, we have employee underscore insert. And to update the employee, employee underscore update. So these stored procedures are also automatically generated. Let's actually look at the um, text of this employee underscore insert. And to look at the text, use the SP underscore help text and then execute that. So that should bring the stored procedure text. So copy that and paste it right there. And if you look at this, you know, look at this employee underscore insert. Obviously, to insert an employee, we need name, gender, and salary. And those are being passed in as parameters and a simple insert query there. And then notice you know, an additional thing that in this insert stored procedure is doing. Now, when we insert an employee, it's going to automatically generate the ID column value, which is our identity column. Now, the auto-generated identity value, look at this. We are retrieving using the scope identity function. And then that is stored in this variable right here. And then finally, we are returning that ID value back. OK, so the insert stored procedure, uh, you know, it should also return the auto generated identity column value. OK, and similarly, it also has Im implemented the employee update and employee delete stored procedures. OK, so now let's go back to Visual Studio. And then at the moment, we don't have any data within the table. So let's quickly execute the select query, select star from employees. So the table at the moment is empty. Let's actually execute the SQL script to insert some sample data into it. And let's refresh this web form. So now we should get the data. So we have the data grid view is displaying. Now let's actually fire up uh, SQL profiler. And we want to run a trace. So click that and click Edit. And let's change mark name to mark M. Look at this at the moment. ID field is also editable. Uh, if, you, if you don't want that to be editable, simply set the read-only attribute of that column to true. So let's update this. Look at that. It has got updated. Now if we go back and if we look at 
right here. Look at this employee update is called and look at that ID value, name uh, value, gender and salary value, all of them are passed. So it's now using that employee underscore update stored procedure. Similarly, let's try to delete an employee. So employee is deleted. Now let's go back here. It should have used employee underscore delete. Look at that. It has passed the uh, parameter for ID, I mean parameter value for at ID parameter. Similarly, let's insert maybe another employee. Let's call Stacy, female, and 60,000 is the salary. So look at that. That record is inserted. And if we look at SQL Profiler, it should have called employee underscore insert. And if you don't want this ID to be editable, simply within the web form, in the grid view control, we should have an ID bound field. There we go. Simply set that read only attribute to true. Run this. And when we edit it, now ID column is not editable. All right. So it's that easy um, you know, to use stored procedures with entity framework code first approach. So basically, uh, the method that we have overridden, that is on model creating, this is where we tell the entity framework uh, to use stored procedures. And these are the stored procedures that the entity framework has automatically generated for us. Look at the naming convention, very important. OK. All right, that's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.